so I will be reading from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and this chapter is chapter 5 advice from a caterpillar and here's the picture to start us off the caterpillar and Alice looked at each other for some time in silence at last the caterpillar took the pipe out of its mouth and spoke to her in a sleepy voice who are you he asked Alice replied I I don't know sir at least I knew who I was when I got up this morning, but I have changed so many sizes since then. What do you mean by that, he said the, cap the caterpillar sternly. Explain yourself. I can't explain myself, said Alice, because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see, said the caterpillar. I can't put it more clearly, Alice replied politely. I can't understand it myself to begin with. I have been so many sizes today. It is very confusing. It isn't, said the caterpillar. Well, maybe not to you, said Alice, but when you have to turn into a chrysalis and then after that into a butterfly, I think you'll feel a little strange, won't you? Not a bit, said a the caterpillar. Well, maybe your feelings will change, said Alice. It has been very strange to me. You, said the caterpillar. Who are you? She replied, I think you have to tell me who you are first. Why, said the caterpillar. He had a good point and didn't seem to be in a good mood, so she decided to leave and began walking away. Come back, the caterpillar called after her. I have something important to say. Alice turned and came back again. Keep your temper, said the caterpillar. Is that all, said Alice, holding in her anger as well as she could. And here's a picture of them, of this, of them in this conversation. No, said the caterpillar. Alice thought she might as well wait. The caterpillar might tell her something worth hearing. For some minutes it puffed without speaking, but at last it unfolded its arms, took the pipe out of its mouth again and said, So you think you're changed, do you? And here's a picture of the caterpillar. I'm afraid I am, sir, said Alice. I don't stay the same size for longer than ten minutes. What size do you want to be, it asked. Um, I really don't care what size I am, Alice replied. I just don't like changing sizes so much. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, said the caterpillar. Alice said nothing. She felt that she was losing her temper again. Are you happy with your size now, said the caterpillar. Well, I would like to be a little, a little larger, if you wouldn't mind, said Alice. Three inches is such a terrible height to be. It is a very good height indeed, said the caterpillar, ang angrily rearing itself upright as it spoke. It was exactly three inches high. But I'm not used to it, pleaded poor Alice. And here's a pic another picture of them talking. You'll get used to it in time, said the caterpillar. It took the pipe back into its mouth and began smoking again. This time, Alice waited until the caterpillar chose to speak again. The caterpillar took the pipe out of its mouth and yawned once or twice and then shook itself. Then it got down off the mushroom and crawled away in the grass, saying as it went, One side will make you grow taller, and the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? said Alice. Of the mushroom, said the caterpillar, and then it crawled out of sight. Alice looked at the mushroom, trying to figure out which two sides did what. It was perfectly round, so it was hard to choose. She stretched her arms around it as far as they would go and broke off a bit of the edge with each hand. And now which is it? which is which, she said to herself, and nibbled a little bit of the right hand bit to see what would happen. And here's her trying to decide which side of the mushroom made her taller or smaller. The next moment, she felt a blow underneath her chin. It had struck her foot. The sudden change frightened her, but she had to hurry. She was shrinking fast. She quickly took a bite of the other bit. Her chin was pressed so hard against her foot, there was hardly enough room to open her mouth. She managed to swallow a small bit of the left-hand side of the mushroom. My head is free at last, Alice said with delight. Her happiness faded when she realized she could not see her shoulders. All she could see was her long neck, which seemed to poke out above some green leaves that lay far below her. What can all that green stuff be, said Alice, and where have my shoulders gone? And oh, my poor hands, why can't I see you? She was moving them about, 
but she saw no result except a little shaking in the green leaves. She couldn't get her hands to her head, so she tried to get her head to her hands. Her neck bent in any direction like a snake, so she started curving it down into the leaves, which she found out were the top of trees. And here's a picture of her head on the top of the trees. Alice moved her neck in and out of the trees. It kept getting tangled among the branches, so she had to stop it and twist it until at last she found her shoulders. She remembered that she still had the pieces of mushroom in her hand and started nibbling at one and then the other. She grew sometimes taller and sometimes smaller until she finally got back to her regular height. It had been such a long time since she had been the right size that it felt strange at first, but she got used to it in a few minutes. There's half my plan done now. I'm back to my right size and now I'm off to find that beautiful garden. But oh, how do I find it? As she said this, she saw in front of her a little house about four feet high. I can't go to that house being this size. I would scare whoever lives there out of their wits. So she began nib eating the right hand bit of the mushroom again and didn't go near the house until she was nine inches high. And here's a picture of her finding that house and nibbling the mushroom. And that's the end of this chapter. Um, so write down your favorite part of um, this chapter and then the character that was introduced. Which was the caterpillar and then Alice was obviously in this chapter. So yeah, that's it. Thank you.